Um, if, as we read this verse, uh, it may sound familiar. Uh, hopefully it sounds familiar. Hopefully, hopefully there's not many verses in the Bible that don't uh, sound familiar, especially to us who have um, been Christians for an extended period of time. Um, but it probably sounds familiar because Brother Ian spoke uh, on this verse, or this was a part of his lesson just a, a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago, I guess, to be exact. Um, when he talked about, um, sorry, Ian, there it is. Find the pointer here. Um, when he talked about uh, resolutions, and he talked about the Apostle Paul, and specifically in this verse, referring to his life before he became a Christian, and all of those things that he had to boast of in the flesh, the success that he enjoyed as a Jew, and the things that were important to him before he became a Christian. And then he says, but when I realized the value in Christ, the much greater value, the importance of the truth in Jesus Christ, he said, I counted all of those things as rubbish, or as the King James says, as dung, as worthless, and... As you, if you remember in that lesson, which, which uh, I enjoyed very much, it was, was very instructive to me and hopefully to you, that um, Ian talked about some specific goals that we should have as Christians. <clears throat> he talked about uh, the fact that if we were going to set resolutions for this year, one of those would be to give more attention to God, uh, time in His Word and time with His people. Um, and he talked about praying every day, that that's something that we as Christians... We as followers and believers in Jesus Christ, something that should be near and dear to us is, is time of prayer with God and to not merely pray, but to pour out our hearts to God, to, to really communicate and, and enjoy that time with God, with Him who longs for us to cast our cares upon Him and who cares for us. Um, and the other thing we talked about was that we don't do it alone, that, that we engage and build relationships with other Christians, the importance of sharing this walk in Christ and the fact that God has given us each other in the family of God to share that walk with each other. And, you know, and that's something that I, I like this picture because I think that's a good illustration of helping each other, that we're, you know, we're all striving for the same goal and we are working together to get there. And <clears throat> as, as we've talked over the last couple of weeks, um, we want, as we go through this year, we're going we're gonna to coordinate sermons around specific themes as we go along. And, and the kind of the overarching theme of that is to grow in Christ, that we want, uh, we want to encourage and help each other grow in Christ through the things that we study, um, both here during our services and, and during private studies, too, that we want to... Um, encourage people to be a part of and you know as we thought about those themes that we wanted to talk about many of those themes or a lot of that came from the the visits that we did over the past year um, in the homes of, of of most of you if not all of you um, to talk about just things uh, to get everybody's input on how things are going and things that maybe we could do better. And we talked about things maybe we could teach on. Um, and so we, we've kind of used that feedback to talk to, kind of develop, and, and, you'll, and we'll do talk more about that as we go along, but the specific themes that we want to teach around um, as we go through this year. Um, and the other part of that is we want to continue that engagement, that... Um, we want to continue to be in each other's homes and, and spending time individually to do specifically this, to engage and build relationships with each other so that we can better help each other in living the Christian life. <clears throat> the Apostle Peter, in 2 Peter chapter 3 and 18, he's writing there and he's writing about the end of the world that's going to come and the, that when Jesus returns, that this universe is going to melt with fervent heat and he he, tell, he says, be diligent, be diligent in the lives that you live so that when, you, when we appear before Jesus, what he will find us in peace. And he talks about the fact that there are 
people out there in the world who are going to twist the scriptures. Um, and he said, and they do this out of misunderstanding the scripture, but, but they also do it to their own destruction. And he said, he said you, be, you be wary, be, be aware that these things are out there, that there are people who are going to teach false things and are misunderstanding the, the word of God, are going to teach things in error. He said, don't be caught up in those things. He says, but this, grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We have, as Christians, like any living being, we're constantly changing. We're constantly growing. I, Brother Monty says sometimes every step we take is a step toward God or away from God. And so we want to make sure that we keep our steps toward God, that we, we continue to grow in grace and knowledge. And we should, certainly should have the desire to do that. And that is, that is what these themes are, what we want to encourage everybody to do through these themes. So back here to Philippians chapter 3. So we're going to pick up kind of where Brother Ian left off uh, back on the, uh, the first Sunday, first day of this new year. And so the following verse, after, after Paul says that all of those things that, that before were gained to me, I now count them as rubbish so that I can win Christ. And then he goes on to say, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness, which is, which is from God by faith. So Paul says... <clears throat> If I'm to, to call, one of the reasons I saw that I needed to count those the old things in rubbish, as rubbish to win Christ was, would be so that I would be found in Christ. You know, that, that term in Christ, if you read the Apostle Paul's writings, um, someone's counted, that term is used about 150 times or over 150 times in Paul's writings. The fact that we as Christians are in Christ, that in Christ are all spiritual blessings. We want to be in Christ. Outside of Christ, we have none of those things. So we want to be found. Paul says, I want to be found in Christ. Be found by whom? Be found by God. Be found by the Lord in Christ. Um, as you read through the scriptures and you read all of these th blessings that are in Christ, there are only... There's only one way the scripture describes that we are placed into Christ. Who places us into Christ? God places us into Christ. When does he place us into Christ? Romans 6 and Galatians 3 both say that we are baptized into Christ. That when we submit ourselves to the will of God and obeying him in baptism, that we are baptized into Christ. Our life is hidden in Christ. All spiritual blessings we find in Christ. And he goes on to say, I want, he says, I'm, I want to be found in Christ. I want not having my own righteousness, which is from the law. And again, he's pointing back to those things that he enjoyed as, as a Jew and the things that he put his trust and his hope in, in those, those things of the flesh. And he said, I don't, want my, I don't want to be found with that righteousness. Because you know what he said in Romans, he said, there's none righteous. Of our own volition, there is none righteous. In fact, the Old Testament, I believe it's in Jeremiah, tells us that our righteousness is as filthy rags. Our, we don't want to be found in our own righteousness, but we want that righteousness that is through faith in Christ. <clears throat> because when we are in Christ, we are covered with Christ. We are credited with his righteousness God sees us and he doesn't see our filthy rags he sees the righteousness of Christ because we are in him and therefore we want to be found like Paul in Christ he said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death if by any means I may attain to the resurrection of the dead so what is Paul saying? Is he saying, I don't know the Lord, but I want to? No, that's not what he's saying. What he's saying again is, the reason I put those other things away and counted them as rubbish is so that I would know Christ. The Apostle Paul certainly knew the Lord. He knew the Lord, he knew the Lord Jesus. He knew the Lord Jesus 
after he met him on the way to Damascus and after he waited for three days for Ananias to come to him and tell him the things the Lord had planned for him and to tell him, Arise and be baptized, washing away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. The Apostle Paul knew the Lord. Do you know the Lord this morning? Let me just say, if you have submitted to the will of God in obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ, you know the Lord. <clears throat> if you've obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you, you know the Lord, just as the Apostle Paul knew the Lord. <clears throat> you know, it, we can't overstate the importance of knowing the Lord. You know, Jesus, in the Sermon on the Mount... Toward the end of it, he said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. For in that day, many are going to come to me and say, We've done all these wonderful things in your name. And Jesus said, And I'm going to say to them, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, of lawlessness. He said, I never knew you. I never knew you. We, we In order to know Jesus Christ, in order for him to know us, we have to have a right relationship with him. And that right relationship is based on the gospel. Believing the things of the gospel, that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died for our sins, that he was buried and that he was raised again the third day. And believing that, we submit to his will. We confess our belief. We are buried with him in baptism. Our old person is buried with him as dead and that we rise to walk in newness of life. And therefore we know the Lord. And if you are a Christian this morning and you are in Christ, you know the Lord and the power of his resurrection. The apostle Paul knew the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, but he, could, he would not know that if he depended on something else besides the gospel of Jesus Christ for his salvation. But as Christians, we know the power of the resurrection. We see that power demonstrated in those who were witnesses to it, whose lives were changed and who went about, as, the, as we'll read about as we go through the book of Acts, that they turned the world upside down. They were changed, and not only were they changed, they changed the world because of the power of the resurrection. The things that are, that are shown and revealed and validated to us through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> that he is the son of God. That all the promises that God made us through him are true and will come true and will come to pass. <clears throat> the power of the resurrection is the validation that in Christ we know that we have victory over death. And therefore we should not fear death. We should not live in fear of death, but we should know that in Jesus Christ we have victory over death, that we have victory over sin, that in him we have the forgiveness of sin. And we have victory over the fear of people, that we will not fear what people may do to us because we know our life is hid with Christ in God and through the power of the resurrection we have eternal life in him. He says and I'm, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. Well, those first two we are probably excited about. This one we may not be as <laughs> excited about. But how important is this? Having fellowship with his sufferings. We've read and studied in recent weeks about the suffering that Jesus went through on the cross. And Paul said, I left those things that I deem now as rubbish so that I could, be, I could have fellowship with that suffering. Think about that word fellowship. I think we understand it, but you know, if you, you think about fellowship, you think about people who've, who've served in combat together. I haven't done that. Brother Bob's done that. Others of you may have done that. But you know, when you go through something together like that, that it's, it's really hard to explain it to someone else. But with someone you've gone through with that, there's a special bond there. There's a special understanding there. There's a special fellowship because we've gone through this together. Paul says, as Christians, when we take on the name of Christ and we confess him in the lives that we live, we are going to be partakers of his sufferings. We are going to have fellowship with him because 
as the world hated Jesus, the world will hate us. And so there are things we're going to go through. The Apostle Paul said we're all going to suffer persecution if we want to live godly in Christ Jesus. There are things that we want to go through that we are going to go through that are going to make us partakers of his sufferings. And there are things that we as Christians and as the family of God are going to share in to get it with each other so that we share in that fellowship with Jesus and with each other, that we have that bond with each other because we are going through the same things together. <clears throat> it said, being conformed to his death. Being conformed to his death. You know, you think about what happens when we become a Christian. We're, we're baptized into Christ's death. Our old person dies and we're raised a new person and that's what Paul's talking about. The life that I let now live is conformed to the death of Christ and that's what Paul says in Galatians 2 and 20. I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live but Christ <clears throat> who lives in me and the life which I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul said I've died to self. I have died to self and now I live to Christ. My life is conformed to the death of Christ, a death to self and, a, and, a, and alive to Jesus. And that's the same for us. You know, in Colossians 3, Paul says, if you were then raised with Christ, when? When we came out of the waters of baptism. We were raised with Christ. Seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above and not on the things above of the earth for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God and when Christ who is our life appears then you also will appear with him in glory so Paul says I gave up all those things so that I would know Christ so that I would I would know the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering my life being conformed to his death and that is the same pattern for you and I as Christians <clears throat> that we are, that we die to self but are alive to God and, and we are growing in that relationship with Christ. He says, if by any means I may attain unto the resurrection from the dead, and here is the goal. Paul said, I want to, and I want to um, embrace all of these things in Christ so that I may attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Now, when you read the scripture, you we understand that the dead, great and small, are going to be raised. There's going to be a resurrection of all people. But Paul is specifically saying here, when that resurrection happens, I want to be found in Christ. I want to be found with the people of God. That when Jesus appears, that I will be with him and all of those who are his ushered in to eternity. To have that, to enjoy heaven with him and God's people. That's what he's looking forward to. That is the goal that he's looking toward, that he is always striving toward. He says, not that I've already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has laid hold of me. <clears throat> I haven't already attained it. The race isn't finished. The battle's still going on. There's no place to quit until I'm until I'm there, until I'm finished. He said, but I press on. I press on. Paul had been through a lot of things already at this point in his life, and he had suffered. He knew the fellowship of Christ's sufferings in the, thing, in the life that he had lived. And he knew a lot of disappointments. And he knew hardship. And there were times, I'm sure, that he was tired. But you know what he said? But regardless of all of those things... I press on. I keep going. I never, I'll never give up. And that is the pattern for you and I, that we press on. We're going to have disappointment in this life. There are things that are going to hinder us. There are things that are going to distract us. And through all of those things, we've got to keep our eye on the goal. And we've got to press on. That I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has laid hold of me. <clears throat> What? <laughs> I think you understand that. 
that I may lay hold on that for which Christ has laid hold on me. Think about the Apostle Paul who left Jerusalem to go to Damascus, who was a Jew of the Jews, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, a person who thought was doing, he thought he was doing the will of God and, and was very um, zealous in doing that. He was persecuting the church. He thought he was doing the right thing. And Jesus appeared to him and said, Paul, what are you doing? Why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? I'm Jesus of Nazareth whom you're persecuting. It's hard for you to kick against the goads, he said, against those prods that they, that they prodded the, the oxen with. You're fighting the wrong battle, Paul. You're on the wrong side. And Paul said, what would you have me to do? He said, you go to Damascus and it'll be told you there what you must do. And we, therefore we see, and we see the conversion of Paul that Jesus laid hold on him. And Jesus told Ananias, he's going to suffer a lot of things for me, Paul is. You need to tell him about that. But, he, but I've got a job for him to do. He's going to carry the gospel. I have a plan for him. I have work for him to do. God, uh, Jesus had purpose in Paul. And the end of that purpose was that he would have eternal life with him. He said, I want to lay hold on eternal life. That's what Jesus, that's which Jesus laid on hold on me for. That was the purpose I was called to, to serve him here and live eternity with him there. And that is the same purpose that Jesus has in you and I, that he has, who laid hold on you? Who laid hold on you through the calling of the gospel? It was Jesus. I think God... Paul says, wrote here in Philippians, the first chapter, on every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you all with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it in the day, until the day of Jesus Christ. The day of Jesus Christ is when Jesus will return. The work that he has started with us is used for us to be of use in his kingdom and in, in becoming more and more like Jesus and in the process being of service in his kingdom to bring others to him also. Paul says, I pray that God will finish that work in you. It is our prayer that God will finish that work in us. Jesus laid hold of Paul for eternal life. He has laid hold on you for eternal life. God finished that work in us. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward calling in Christ Jesus. Paul said again, I don't count myself to have already apprehended. The race is still going. He says, but this one thing I do. When I read this, I think, well, maybe there's three things. <laughs> no, there's one thing. And that one thing that he says I do, he says, I press on. I press toward the prize for the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. This one thing I do, I keep pressing on. But in order to press on, Paul said, I have to forget those things that are behind. There are many things in this life that would take us off the path. That would tell us to quit that would hinder us, that would discourage us. We have an enemy who is trying to do that all the time. Paul says, I can't, I can't allow those things to, to take me off the path. I can't th let the things that have already happened to me distract me from that which I'm doing, which is I'm pressing on, but first I have to forget I have to forget those things that are past. Now, you didn't mean literally forget? I can't remember anything that's happened. No. He said, but I can't, I can't live there. I can't allow those things to take me off track. We have to get past the past. In all of our lives, there are things that Satan would use to stop us, to make us quit, to make us think that I can't do it, or I'm not worthy. 
none of us are worthy. It's the grace of Jesus Christ who calls us and says, don't give up. Don't quit. We're all going to stumble. We're all going to fall. Don't stay there. Don't let sin stop us. If we have sin, sin's a disappointment, isn't it? We disappoint, disappoint others. We disappoint ourselves. And that can be frustrating. We think, I just can't do it. Paul says, no. <laughs> no. Get up. Keep going. Keep pressing on. To do that, if you've sinned, get forgiveness. The scripture says that if we sin, we have an advocate, Jesus Christ the righteous. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just for, to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That is the power of the resurrection of Christ, that we have the forgiveness of sins, that we learn from the mistakes and we learn from the pain that we endure because of that, but we don't quit. We, get, we put the past in the past and we move on. Sometimes we have to give forgiveness. Sometimes the thing that would stop us is because someone else has hurt us. And someone else has disappointed us and therefore it slows us down and we go, I, I don't think I can go on <laughs> because of that. Paul says, no, look at all the things that were done to him, that were done to Christ. Paul says, get over it, get past it. Give forgiveness. Don't rest on your laurels. Don't get to a point where you've enjoyed success as a Christian and all of a sudden we start thinking we're doing pretty good and we want to rest on our laurels. Forget those things. There are more tasks, tasks ahead of us. There are more things to do that God has called us to. Don't look back at the things you've left behind, as Paul said, those things are rubbish. Don't look it back with envy on the things of the world, on the things that you've gotten past and given up and counted as rubbish. Don't look back and start counting those as valued again. Get past those. But most importantly, remember where you're going. Press on. See ahead. See the goal. That's what Paul's saying. There's all these things that would stop us. Paul says, one thing I do. I press on. I have to forget those things that are past. <sighs> Hebrews 12 and 1. The writer says, therefore we also, since we are surrounded with so great a cloud of witnesses, and he's talking about the faithful of all time. Those who have gone before us, who have lived faithful to God until they finished the race. And were witnesses to the faithfulness of God. He said, let us lay aside every weight. And the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Cast those things aside. That's what Paul's saying here too. There's things that would hold us down. There are things that would drag us down. He said, cast them aside. Throw them off. Don't let them stop you. Don't let them slow you down and run with endurance. Keep going. Keep pressing on. Reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Those tasks that God has called us to do. That purpose that he has in your life and in my life to serve him. Don't lose that zeal. Don't lose that fire. Don't let anybody quench it. Don't let anybody put it out. Press on. Look at what's ahead. But ultimately, look where you're going. Look at the prize. That which we, what Jesus laid hold on us at the beginning. That he wants us to carry through to the end. Eternity with him. Eternal life. He's with us all the way. He'll never forsake us. Don't let someone else or something else keep us from getting there. The song that we sang this morning. <clears throat> I love this song. <laughs> I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. <clears throat> Still praying as I onward bound. 
Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. <clears throat> That's what Paul's saying. He's saying, keep moving on. You know, when you work at, look at that word press, you know, we think about pressure, putting, you know, to press something and put pressure on. And obviously that's not what he's talking about here, but he's talking about us pressing, pressing upward, <clears throat> despite the resistance, despite the arrows of the wicked, despite those hindrances that are in the roadblocks that are thrown in front of us, that we're going to climb, we're going to go over or around, we're going to get past. I'm going to keep pressing on. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. Let me see that vision of heaven, of where I'm going. Let me know that I'm getting close. Let me keep striving, keep pressing to get there. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. <sighs> the lesson is yours. <clears throat> This morning, I hope 